Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to go through question 11 and 12 on this high level applications paper. If you're loving the content, then please do like and subscribe, or just let me know what kind of papers that you are looking for IGCSE, IB, or otherwise. Right, let's get started. So, a factory producing plastic gifts for a fast food restaurant, Jolly Meals, claims that just 1% of the toys produced are faulty. Now, a restaurant manager wants to test the claim and the box of 200 times, to times toys is delivered to the restaurant. And the manager is going to check all the toys in this box and four toys are found to be faulty. And the first thing we need to do is identify the type of sampling. Now, on these high level applications paper, there's often a one, two mark question. Just identifying sampling methods, it's in the course. So you need to be aware of quota sampling, random sampling and so on. In this case, however, this is what we call convenience sampling. And the reason it's convenient is because he's taken this 200 box of toys and it's convenient for him to actually just test them on the spot. So all we're looking for here, one mark, convenience sampling. Now he wants to do, a, or she wants to do, a one-tailed hypothesis test. And our significance level, be careful here, is 10%. So our alpha is going to be 0.10 to determine whether the factory's claim is reasonable. It's known that faults in the toys occur independently. This is needed for the binomial we're going to do later on. So next thing we need to do is write down the null and alternative hypotheses. So this is in other language, H0 and H1. And remember, H0 represents the status quo. So it's representing what we expect to happen. And that is that 1% of the toys are faulty. So that is our status quo. That's what we expect, generally speaking. And we have to be quite careful with our H1 here. So our alternative hypothesis, well, let's read this carefully. It's one-tailed, so keep that in mind. And we want to determine whether the factory's claims are reasonable. Okay, so if we read this carefully, we're going to assume that more than 1% are 40 and the reason I know to do more than and not just, you know, not 1% are faulty is this key phrase here, a one-tailed hypothesis test. So that's um, what's giving this away. And whether the factory's claim is reasonable, that's then assuming there's going to be more than 1% that are faulty. From that, we are going to then do a hypothesis test. So we need to decide what distribution we're using here. Well, this is a kind of question where it's either faulty or it's not 40, this kind of yes or no problem, which means we are going to use a binomial distribution. So the distribution we're going to use, this involves then knowing the sample size that we have. Well, I put that in the box here, 200, so that's our sample size. And then the probability of it being 40, well, that's equal to 0.01, like so. And we're assuming, so when he checked all the toys, four toys are found to be 40. So what we need to do is work out the probability that X is greater than or equal to four, so four or more. And now we're gonna go over to the graphical calculator and work that out. Okay, so let me just explain what I put into the calculator here. So I've gone to binomial CDF here, and I'll go through the menu once again. So let's just go through that carefully. So distributions, binomial CDF, a number of trials, the so number of toys for testing here are 200. The probability of success that it is 40 is 0 0.01. Our lower bound is going to be 4 because we want to include that number. And the upper bound, well, I'm just going to choose a 200, a big number here. And then we get our final answer here of 0 0.1415966. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop that in over here just so you can see exactly what I've typed into the calculator. There we are, pop that across, boom, like so. So the answer, our p-value here, this is gonna be our p-value here. And of course we want to round this. So it's gonna be 0 0.142. Now we need to state the conclusion of the test. So this is where the significance level comes in. So let's go on to question D. Well, realize here our p-value 0.142 is just bigger than 0.10. And this 
Here, if you're wondering where this come from, this is what's called the significance level that was told in the question. And because the p-value is bigger than our significance level, therefore we come to the conclusion that there is insufficient evidence. Be very careful when you're writing this. Insufficient evidence to reject H0. If it was below 0 0.1, then we could reject H0. But in this case, we have insufficient evidence to reject H0. Um, therefore, we can assume that, yeah, 1% of the toys are 40. Just to give us some context. Can't spell 40. There we are. <laughs> Right, there we are. So the key thing is you need insufficient evidence to reject H0 because of the 0 0.14 being more than 0 0.1. And on to question 12, a nice integration question. So let's go through this question carefully. A tank of water initially, so that's going to be right at the start when T is equal to 0, contains 400 litres. Water is leaking from the tank such that after 10 minutes... There are 324 liters remaining. The volume is in liters. Tank, uh, bringing in the tank after T minutes. So I'm just checking your units, making sure everything ties up. So T is 10. And we modeled by this differential equation. And we need to show that V is equal to this. Right. This is a reasonably long process. We're going to do something called separation of variables. So let's go through this process. So dV by dt is equal to minus K root V. And the way we do separation of variables is we put all the v's to the left-hand side, leave everything else on the right-hand side. Well, in order to achieve this, we're going to divide by the root of v on both sides of the equation. If we do this, we get 1 over root v, dv by dt, is equal to minus k. Now, I'm going to rewrite 1 over root v, so remember your index laws. We can also write this as v to the power of minus a half. So dv by dt is equal to minus k. If you're not sure where that comes from, then please do watch the video above, where I go through lots of the sort of fundamental groundwork you need on indices. At this point, we're going to integrate both sides with respect to t, and this will have a very pleasing effect, as you'll see in a moment. So we're going to do the integral of v power of minus a half, dv by dt with respect to t equals the integral of minus k dt. Now this has the effect these dt's cancel, so to speak, which means we get this nice integral here then, v to the power of minus a half dv equal to the integral of minus k dt. Now let's think how this integrates. So I'm going to go over to this slide, just write this again so we can go through this carefully integral of minus k dt. So remember our integration rules, we add one to the index. So we add one to this, so minus a half plus one is a half, and then divide by the new index. And on the other side, if we integrate, which is a constant, and we're just adding a t in this case, just like so, plus our constant of integration. Divided by a half is the same as times in by 2, so we can write this as 2v to the power of a half equals minus kt plus c. At this point, we can use our initial conditions. So when t is equal to 0, then v is equal to 400. So we pop that in. So 2 lots of 400 to the power of a half. Well, t is 0, so that disappears. So we just get c. And let's work through this. So the square root of 400 is going to be equal to 20, and then 2 times 20 is equal to 40. So our constant is going to be equal to 40. Now it's time to use our second initial, uh, second bit of information. So when t is equal to 10 here, then the volume is equal to 324. This will help us then work out what k is. So let's substitute that in. So we get two lots of uh, 324 to the power of a half is equal to uh, minus 10k, and now c is 40. And from here, we can just simplify this down. So if we work out the square root of 324, that's equal to 18. So 18 times 2 is 36. And we just get a straightforward equation to solve here. 
going to minus 40 from both sides, minus 4, minus 10k, and that gives us then k is equal to 0 0.4. If I'm going through that too quickly, then do pause the video and go back if you want to check the algebra that I've done here. So we have our final model, which is equal to 2v to the power of a half is equal to minus 0.4k plus 40. And now because we want it in this form, we need to make v the subject. So I'm going to divide through by 2. That gives me, well, v to the power of a half or the square root of v is equal to minus 0.2k plus 20, dividing by 2 on both sides. And now I'm squaring on both sides, so I get v equals minus 0.2k. Just realized this should be a t, not a k. It's helpful when you got the answer there. This should be a t, sorry. Uh, plus 20, all squared. And again, this is not quite in the form that they want here. Notice you need to do a little bit of rearranging, so I'm going to put the 20 at the front, and I'm going to change minus 0.2 to a fifth, so minus t over 5 squared, which gives me there my final answer. And now we need to use that answer in the last part to find the time taken, so looking for t here, for the tank to empty. So we want v is equal to zero. So I've run out of room slightly, give me a moment. So now we need to find the time taken for the tank to empty. So we want to find t when the volume is equal to zero. Therefore we take that expression here, zero is equal to 20 minus t over 5, all squared is equal to 0, no, 2 equals to zeros. Uh, therefore we know then the bracket has to be equal to 0, so this is just a straightforward equation to solve here, t over 5 is equal to 20, so then t is equal to 100, and we want the correct units here, equal to 100 minutes, like so. Okay, so you can have a look through the mark scheme here and then check through anything that you're not sure about. And if you haven't checked out the other videos in this series, I recommend you click on the video right in front of you because that goes through this paper from the off.